the biggest reason you should delay your PC build, it's not only to do with Nvidia's low stock of the 3080, it has a little bit more to do with AMD. In October, they're going to be bringing two huge releases. Not only CPUs, they're going to be announcing on October 8th, but on October 28th, they're also going to be bringing the much anticipated RDNA 2 level of GPUs. So let's discuss why this is important and let's get right into it. Hey guys, Tiago here with Classical Technology. Thank you once again for watching to all my recent subscribers. If you haven't subscribed and you like my content, consider subscribing, hitting that notification bell, leave a comment below, any questions you may have with the upcoming launch. So let's talk about a reason really not to build a PC right now, and that's going to be AMD. We've spoken about this before, and the GPU was definitely a primary factor with Nvidia having such low stock. If you asked most people right after the announcement of the Nvidia, 3000 series it didn't seem like such a bad time to build a pc just because the 3080 was eminent was launching people had no idea what was about to happen with the launch of both the 3080 and the 3090 so now let's talk about a few factors why amd's launch is actually fairly significant and even more so after we have less stock going around of the 3080 so first let's talk about the cpu now this is definitely going to be a pretty major one because as you you guys know AMD Ryzen certainly has been extremely popular compared to the Intel competition. For many years Intel kind of stayed a little bit lukewarm just giving very minor upgrades to their CPUs. Along came Ryzen and just blew the doors off what we thought was a good value CPU with the performance that they brought um, especially the Ryzen 3000 series with the Ryzen 3600, the 3900X, even the Monster 3950X, a 16 core processor. So now knowing the impact that Ryzen CPUs have had recently, October 8th is definitely pretty big because every generation they've been bringing some massive improvements and some really great CPUs. Now we're not 100% sure if what they're going to name it, if it's going to be the 4000 series. There are some murmurs that it's going to possibly skip to the 5000 series just because on their laptop and mobile lineup of Ryzen CPUs, they already have the naming for 4000 series CPUs. So they may skip that and do 5000 that doesn't really matter that's just the name regardless i think we're definitely going to get some great cpus that's going to fill in the gap in the market not to mention give us great performance for a good price as amd has done recently there's a possible 10 core cpu coming to sort of compete with intel cpu and then their high-end cpu it's rumored to not only be like we have now the 3950x with 16 cores, 32 threads, but it's rumored that this CPU is gonna be able to clock considerably higher than the current generation Ryzen. And as you guys know, a lot of talk has been had in this generation about using something like a 10900K with the new Nvidia GPUs because of CPU bottlenecks. You definitely need high clock speeds and IPC in order to make sure that your games really aren't bottlenecked the new generation of GPUs are so powerful that now people are playing more at 1440p and at 4K. And while definitely the CPU is less of a factor the higher the resolution goes, it's still pretty important even at 1440p. We're definitely seeing some bottlenecks in certain games even at 1440p. Um, at 4K, it doesn't make as big of a difference, but not as many people are gaming at 4K. So these new Ryzen CPUs, if they have multi-cores like they've had in the past, as well as clock a lot higher, getting closer to Intel, I think they're really going to close the gap. And that's going to be positive news for the consumer because that's going to force Intel to respond once again with not only better prices, but much better performing chips. And then the circle kind of keeps going around. That way we keep getting better products for better prices instead of what happened for years and years with Intel, where you would have the same performance just bumped up a little bit year after year. There wasn't too much innovation going on. So this now is really pushing both companies to innovate. Now, if you were building a PC and you really weren't planning on upgrading your CPU anyway, this doesn't matter as much to you. Maybe you have something that's really good already, like a Ryzen 3000. And then we asked the question, with the new Ryzen CPUs coming out, who really should be upgrading to them, especially if in the future you want to take advantage of the new GPUs from both Nvidia and AMD, considering that stock is fair, of course, right now everything's sold out. So who really should be upgrading? 
I think if you're a gamer and you already have an Intel processor, especially from the last one or two generations that clocks really high, like a 10900K, 9900K, even 9700K, I think unless you need that multi-threaded workload performance, like for workstation use, I think you should be fine. You don't really have to upgrade um, because if you're just doing gaming, that's what those CPUs were meant for. And even with the new Ryzen CPUs, even though they're going to clock higher and be better for gaming, I don't think they're going to beat the Intel gaming CPUs by that huge of a margin because as it stands now they're trailing a little bit behind when it comes to pure gaming performance so I think at most maybe they'll kind of meet them or beat them a little bit but those people I really wouldn't worry about upgrading as much now if you have a Ryzen 2000 series like a 2700x I think this is going to be a great time to upgrade if you skip the Ryzen 3000 series because you're going to get so many more benefits much higher clock speeds I think you'll see massive gains if you do have a Ryzen 3000 series depending on which one I don't really know if it's a big deal to upgrade I mean if you have a Ryzen 3900X that's still a fantastic CPU and while it's not gonna have the number one performance for games it still does fine in gaming for the most part it's only gonna be a few percentage points lower than most Intel CPUs so Ryzen 3000 series not really a big deal unless you just really want to have the latest and greatest and you're gonna get maybe like a 3080 or a 3090 and you really want to make sure you don't bottleneck anything in your system then yeah I could see you know upgrade to a Ryzen, whatever it is, 4000 or 5000 series would definitely be beneficial to you because the current Ryzen 3000 processors, as good as they are, there's definitely a little bit more room for improvement in terms of their clock speeds in order to better take advantage of gaming performance. And then we come to AMD's second announcement, and that's going to be RDNA 2, or maybe as people call it, <laughs> Big Navi. Now, this is also significant for a few reasons. The first reason is that it's really the first time that AMD is trying to go head to head with Intel, at least on the higher end, at least for the last couple of generations. Now, previously they had the 5700 XT, which did have a pretty good performance for the dollar, but it kind of slotted below the uh, 2070 Super. There was nothing there to really compete with like a 2080 level GPU not to mention that that GPU did have some driver issues which kind of turned some people off from it with like you know black screens and crashing and things of that nature um, a little bit ironic that the 3080 also had some of those issues but anyway people are very excited for RDNA 2 because it's supposed to be bringing performance that's going to at least rival we hope something like the 3080 um, and pricing wise the 3080 was already priced fairly fairly let's say at the 699 MSRP for the base card for the performance that it has i think most people were happy with that that's why the demand was really off the charts so whatever amd brings to compete with that i think the performance has to be at least close to it um, if it's a little more that'd be awesome but then that would just mean that nvidia would release like the 20 gigabyte version of the 3080 or maybe a little bit faster version or the 3080 ti i really doubt nvidia will let amd beat the 3080 without immediately responding with something more powerful just because they want to stay at the top of that mainstream game um, and we're not talking about the 3090 here that's a very special niche card we do have the 3070 launching as well october 15th but i definitely wouldn't keep my hopes up too high just because i think it's gonna sell out instantly like the 3080 and 3090 especially that gpu with 2080 ti level performance for 499 i don't think it's gonna stay on the shelves very much at all i think it's gonna be instantly sold out possibly even worse than we had the 3080 and 3090 sell out but maybe a silver lining if there's that much attention on the 3070 maybe nvidia will start to produce a little bit more of the 3080s and 3090s and that way the people that couldn't get them now will be able to slowly get them a little bit more but we're not too sure yet what's going to happen with that so speaking about the 3070 and stock that points us to another big reason that people are excited for a possible amd rdna2 launch we're hoping that they're going to at least have like a reasonable level of stock there was some chatter on twitter with somebody from amd and they just kind of said that you know it's not going to be a paper launch so it will be launching but we have no idea if supply is going to be constrained and you can bet that especially if it's a, a good gpu and it performs well and it's priced well 
all those people that couldn't get 3080s, you can bet that there's going to be a rush for this GPU. I think the demand is so high that, okay, it's good that we have another player in the market, you know, AMD with the RDNA 2, but that doesn't mean that it's going to be too much easier to find GPUs, just because I think the demand will continue to be extremely high, even after the 3080, 3090, 3070, people, I think, are going to have the same amount of energy to try and get a new AMD GPU. So I'll ask the same question that I did on the CPU side. Who really should be upgrading? Now, obviously, if you were lucky enough to get a 3080 or one of these newer GPUs now, you know, you're pretty much set. You're probably not even worried about the AMD launch, but there are a lot of people that couldn't get their hands on a 3080 or maybe never even thought about the 3080. Maybe they wanted a 3070 level GPU, but that's going to be difficult as well. So if you're one of those people, I think I don't even have to tell you. You already know that you're going to be really anticipating what AMD is going to announce. And if it's available in stock and you couldn't get an NVIDIA GPU and the performance and price is good with AMD, I'm pretty sure a lot of you will definitely go on that side. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Just a little insight to what's coming up now in October. Remember to subscribe, hit that notification bell, leave a comment below, and I'll see you guys on the next video.